This is a Math 2 lesson summary video for the task titled Something to Talk About. This is a develop understanding task. The purpose of this lesson is for students to start thinking about quadratic patterns and how to represent quadratic functions. In this task, you're given a series of four figures to work with. These four figures represent a pattern that can be represented with a table, a graph, a rule, formula, equation. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start by looking at these figures closely. We're going to mark the diagram to make our thinking visible. And when I say our thinking, that would be our thoughts about the pattern of change or the relationship between the figure number and the number of blocks in the figure. We'll look at a table and graph and we'll create both a recursive rule and an explicit rule. We'll also look at this pattern of change to see if we can identify what type of function should be used to model this data. So let's look closely at each figure. In figure one, there's a total of one block. Figure two, I have a total of three blocks. Figure three, I have, let's see, four, five, six blocks. In figure four, I have 10 blocks. Now, when I look at this closely, how I see it changing is if this one has one, this one added two more, and I put a little plus two, and I see those two that it was added, it's like it got a, a bottom row each time. So here it added three, and it's those three right here. And then here, there were four that were added right there. Now, when you looked at this, you might've seen that they just added another column each time, you also may have seen it as adding a diagonal, so it added these four. However you see it changing, just make sure that you mark it on your diagram the way that you see it. Next, let's take a look at the table of values and a graph. Now, I use Desmos to help me get this organized. So there was one block there, three, six, and 10. And here I marked my diagram so that it was just adding up that last column every time as it moved from one to the other. If I'm looking at this pattern, I can see that it is not linear. Here I'm adding two. So that's the two that I went from figure one to figure two. Then I'm adding three. And then I'm adding four. I can see that the amount that I'm adding is the same as the value of x. So I'm adding each time, I'm adding x. I can also see that this is not linear from my graph. I can see how it's curving. It's going up two, then it's going up three over one, and going up four over one. If I continue the pattern, to get to the where x is 5, I'll add 5 to my previous number to get 15. That would follow the same pattern. To get to my next value here where x is 6, I'll need to add 6. So I would have 21 if I continued my table. Which means recursively, what I'm adding each time from the previous is just the value of x. So each time I want to get to the next term, for example, when I wanted to get to the sixth term, I had to add six to the previous term. So that means recursively, I have to take the previous term, f of x minus one, and add x. So to get to the seventh term, I'll have to take the previous value of 21, and I need to add 7 to get to 28. Then the last thing I need to make sure I include with my recursive rule is where I started. So I'll put a comma, and then f of 1 equals 1. So I have my recursive rule. So remember, a recursive rule takes you from one figure to the next. To get to the next figure, I have to take the previous figure and add x. x represents the figure number. So this is the figure number, and then f of x represents the number of blocks that are in that figure. 
I have my recursive rule, but I also want to create an explicit rule. So with my explicit equation, I'm wanting to relate the figure number to the number of blocks or the area of the shape. Since I'm talking about the number of blocks in the figure, that is an area. So figure four had 10 blocks, figure three had six, figure two has three, and figure one has one. So since I'm trying to relate this figure number, this 4, to the area, I want to see if I can use some area formulas that helps me incorporate this number 4 for this figure, this number 3 for this figure, number 2, and number 1. So when I look at these figures, I actually sort of see triangles here. Um, when you're trying to find the area, if you can get your blocks arranged into a rectangle or a triangle, something that you can apply an area formula that you're familiar with, then that'll make this a little easier. So here I see triangles, so that's why I have these lines here ready. I'm going to cut these into triangles. And you notice that the length and the width of my triangles are the same thing as the figure number. So this triangle here is, has a, a width here of 4 and a height of 4. This one is 3 by 3. This triangle is 2 by 2. And this one is 1 by 1. So this is what I mean by relating this figure number to the shape. I also notice that I have these little half pieces. And the number of the half pieces also relates to my figure number. This one has three little half pieces, which is the same as my figure number. That one has two, and this one has one. Now, since I know the formula for the area of a triangle, which is one half base times height, I can substitute in my values to get this area of this triangle. So I have this area of this triangle. So that would be one half times four times four, because base times height. I'm also going to add that I have four half blocks. Now I can, just to check my work, make sure that the math works out. So one half of four is two, times two times four is eight. So I have eight plus two, that gives me 10. So I know that this works. If I applied the same thing over here, I would have one half three times three plus another three half size blocks. Okay, so that was four and a half, one, two, three, four and a half, plus one and a half out here to give me a total of six. Now where this is helpful in creating my explicit equation, I know that I could have a figure number where the figure was n or x or any variable. I know that the same pattern is going to work out where I'm going to have a triangle that is n units by n units. So I'll have my area equals one half n times n plus n half blocks. So one half times n. And then here's my explicit formula. The area equals one half n squared plus one half n. I could write this in function notation. I can do f of x equals one half x squared plus one half x. Let's take a look at one other strategy for writing explicit equations. So again, for the explicit equation, what I'm going to do is just first write down how many total blocks there are in each figure. And last time I looked at these as triangles. This time I want to make rectangles because I also know area formulas for rectangles that are pretty uh, easy to do. So to make rectangles, I could either try to move some of the blocks around so that I'm consistently making the same type of rectangle. Or what I could do is take the figure, double it, rotate it 180 degrees, and then put it right here to make these rectangles. So I first double it, rotate 180 degrees, and I'll translate it so it's sitting right on top. And I'm doing the same thing, so that one was already doubled. Rotate and translate. Double 
well, rotate, didn't really have to rotate that one, and then translate. So I've done the same thing to each one. I have to make sure I do the same thing each time so I can make sure I find the right relationship. So I'm still wanting to relate this figure number to the diagram. So I right have four and I've made rectangles. For a rectangle we have area equals length times width. Here the length is four and the width is five. So I had that four and then of course it added one. Let's see if that happened each time. This one was 3, which was the same thing as the figure number. This one was 3 plus this extra 1. So that would be 4. And that's 2 by 3, and that's 1 by 2. So each time I had the figure number plus 1, and that happened because of the way I rotated and then added the figure back. There was always one here because there was always one down there. Now to get my explicit equation, I have area equals length times width. So one dimension was the exact same thing as the figure number. So I'll say n. This is the same thing as n. This one is n plus 1. So I have the length times the width, which is n times n plus 1. Now we just have to be careful here because this gives me the area of twice the figure, but I only want the area of half of that. So what I need to do is just divide by 2 to get to my original figure. Now on the, f the previous screen, the equation was f of x equals 1 half x squared plus 1 half x. Now we're getting f of x equals x times x plus 1 divided by 2. So the question is, are these equivalent? And absolutely they are equivalent. If I take this equation right here and instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to move this so it's saying multiply by 1 half. Now I could from here distribute this 1 half x, in other words, multiply 1 half x to x and 1 half x to 1, and I would get this exact same thing that I got originally. I could also factor my first equation, because I have a common factor of 1 half x in both, so if I factor out that 1 half x, get the same thing, because there is one explicit equation. So we had previously established that we knew that this was not a linear function because of the rate of change and the shape of the graph. This is a quadratic function. Now you should be somewhat familiar with quadratic functions from your work in Math 1. But just to remind you, quadratic functions have a linear rate of change, which means that the first difference can be modeled with a linear function. So quadratic functions have a linear first difference, which means that they have a constant second difference. Because of this linear first difference, this linear change, with a recursive equation, you're always going to be adding a linear expression. In this case, it was plus x. With explicit equations, when your equation is written in standard form, so remember that standard form for a quadratic is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you will always have this x squared. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.